Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver yeah, now. Roadrooter.com. Um, very special day. Or last night, yesterday, the last few days. Great discussion, by the way, on Rumble. Um, Jean-Claude, Beyond Mystic, chats with Cliff High and Snippy about um, Baltimore and other things going on right now um, in the war. It's part of the war, my friends. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that at the end where it's pretty obvious that the, um, the ship was steered at the last second. Um, so <laughs> here we go again, right? Here we go again. Uh, this is probably one of many, many, many economic attacks on the United States. On the banking cabal, you could say, could be them doing it. Nobody knows who's doing it. Um, I got some idea. And by the way, they discuss uh, the Jenny Moonstone unbelievable hit. I mean, here's, <clears throat> for all you Private Road members, I talked last week that I had a discussion with Jenny Moonstone, and, and she brought up uh, a bridge, having a problem with the bridge with silver and the movement of silver and, and things like that. Yesterday, this was last week. The the bridge incident happened yesterday. And nobody really knows how this is going to affect. Cliff seems to think this is a massive, it's going to have a massive effect on the United States and Canada. Um, but listen to what Jenny said, literally. Uh, this was last Thursday. When we're talking about silver and the reporting of silver, the um, just... Out of the blue, listen to what she says. There's something here about a group, and this is gonna set this isn't gonna make any sense right now, but this is it feels like something that's gonna make sense looking back. But there's something about a group in what looks like a like wherever this area is, it's like a bridge. So there's some kind of like even like a, a bit of like land or some kind of a crossing over a body of water. And there's something with silver and the movement of silver because silver has to be moved, right? Like, can, can they just like count it where it's at and then be like, this is where it stays? Or there is, is there extraction of silver, movement of silver? Because there's something here about something in transit. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if this is going to be like publicized or therefore something that could be like verified or you know, you, you might have to be looking for it, but what I'm seeing, um, and I guess you could call this a remote view, I'm not sure, but what I'm getting is that there's some kind of an issue with a group that is attempting to move silver, um, and it's over some, some kind of like, I don't know if it's a natural sort of um, land mass that creates a bridge, um, or if it's a man-made bridge, but they're moving it over water. I don't know why they wouldn't just fly it. I mean, <laughs> it, it, could be. it could be. My gut says, holy crap. <clears throat> yeah. Unbelievable, huh? She's nailed so many things. Go check that out at roadtoreader.com. Um, there's a whole Jenny Moonstone section on the private road. If you go down right there, the Jenny Moonstone section. <laughs> so many, so many great readings about silver, about what's going on right now. Um, <clears throat> check that out. No, we don't rely 100% on psychics and soothsayers and remote viewing and all that. But we do take everything into account at Road to Ruta. And this is a pretty shocking hit right here. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. Um, so how is it? How is this incident affecting um, silver? <clears throat> well, we don't know right now, but we do know uh, LME says it's Baltimore warehouses are unaffected by the bridge collapse. That's a little misleading because there's no... There's no stuff being shipped out of Baltimore. Um, of course, it's not going to affect their warehouse. This is, well, this is uh, they're talking about, um, well, let me read it. LME, this is the London Metal Exchange, not the LBMA, which is gold and silver. But they do share warehouses many, in many instances. They are affiliated. Uh, London Metals Exchange said Tuesday that the warehouse registered with the exchange in Baltimore had not been affected by the bridge that collapsed in the city. The LME has been in touch with its approved warehouses in the area <clears throat> and can confirm that no major issues have been reported. Well, yeah, you're not on the bridge. You're not on the water. You're on the other side, one side or the other, and, and where you're going to ship your metal out of. 
you have to truck it somewhere to ship it out of, and which which facility? I mean, there might be another one attacked. I don't know. Uh, on the East Coast, can do it. We don't know. Anyway, um, the LME has been in touch with its approved warehouses in the area, and there are many of them, by the way. This was probably on the East Coast. This is the biggest area for uh, the commodity shipment. In this this literal, uh, it's a you could say it's an attack an attack on a commodity um, <clears throat> transportation center. Uh, data from the exchange, the world's oldest and largest market for industrial metals, shows that storage facilities in Baltimore had modest amounts of metal. 756 tons of nickel, 150 tons of tin, and 50 tons of copper. Again, the LME does not hold, does not trade gold and silver. That would be the, the LBMA. And nothing, they have said nothing so far. And Jenny also said in her reading, they might just keep this under wraps. But this, uh, this aluminum or this, uh, what is it, uh, nickel, uh, tin, and copper is going nowhere. It's going nowhere fast um, for a while. So keep that in mind. Great excuse for uh, uh, force majeure on COMEX, uh, on all metals, on commodities. Oh, sorry, we, we can't get it out of the port. You know, we can't. Uh, it's a little too convenient for my blood. Um, again, the LBMA, at least it hasn't given an official press release yet. Um, we'll find out. Or, we, or they might not. They might just sweep it under a table and say, hey, on the hush, we can't deliver your silver, but but you know, it's coming. It's, it's just waiting in the port. Yeah, right. Um, it, and by the way, it just happens to be one of the largest marches, largest mar the month of March for um, the COMEX uh, EFPs, Exchange for Physical. This is a, a way that the COMEX warehouse can not deliver on the COMEX, but deliver on the LBMA. So that might be what they're, they're trying to block, is 122 million ounces so far in, in March have been stood for uh, an LBMA delivery. And I think they're running out. I think this is just, they're going to use this as a convenience and say, shh, don't tell anybody. We can't get you your metal. I swear it's in the warehouse, but uh, it, it might be a little while before we can ship you your metal out because of the Baltimore thing. And that's in the contracts. Force majeure is a way they get around it. Um, it's not in the pricing yet, <laughs> of course. Comics is derivative pricing, so the LBMA is completely separate. Um, but... I can't see this being one of the ways that they can slow down the delivery. And there's so much delivery being, um, metal being delivered. It's unbelievable. Ted Butler has been talking about this for years. The, the amount of silver going in and out of the comics warehouses is shocking. Um, and they're looking for every way they can. Now it looks like, my guess is they're saying, hey, because of Baltimore, we can't fulfill the contract for March. Um, and if it leaks out, at some point it will leak out probably. But if it leaks out, because they'll just pile on top of each other. If it leaks out, then everybody's saying, okay, wait wait a minute. You know, what What's going on here at the LBMA? Did they not have the silver to supply? You know, India's on track for 400 million ounces. Was this, you know, a lot of the, Ted Butler says there's silver moved every day. Millions of ounces. And nobody knows why. Um so it's not going to be moved out of Baltimore anytime soon. L L LBMA is not saying anything. L LME came out quick, said, oh, don't worry, don't worry. They can't ship it, but it's there. <laughs> oh, Anyway, all right. Um, looking at uh, the gold-silver uh, ratio, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was talking to Clip the other day, and I have for a long time been thinking, had dreams and discussions in my mind, I know what the ratio of gold and silver is. It's called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is 1.618. And it goes back to like the Fibonacci sequence and the math of the early days and things like that, uh, universal math. Um, but yeah, that would put silver at $1,355 at today's price of gold. 
Uh, that's probably close, a lot closer to the fair market value than $25 um, for various reasons. One, it's coming out of the ground at 7 to 1, but the majority of that is being consumed in uh, and last year and this year. This year, you know, if we had the right numbers, we would see the consumption of silver being greater than the full amount coming out of the ground. So that's like nothing coming out of the ground. Um, but I think the proper gold-silver ratio right now, price ratio, if it wasn't rigged on the COMEX, would be uh, 1.618, the golden ratio, to one, which is uh, $1,355. Believe what you want. Hey, when the, when the COMEX shuts down, which I think is coming, um, they're going to claim force majeure. You know, take out a, another warehouse. Take out another uh, shipping lane. You know, this is a war going on. And, um, yeah. Some people think it's China. Some people think it's the deep state. Some people think it's the, the banking market riggers. I don't know. I don't know who's doing it, but we are at war, my friends. Um, uh, let's see. The moving averages still way above the moving averages. It's not good for the, the shorts in uh, silver. Remember, they, they try to get it down below those moving averages. Um now we have a situation where maybe silver can't even be delivered, even if they wanted to. Um, so maybe the Comex or the LME, uh, LBMA will, will declare force majeure. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from the Comex either. And there's still days left. Uh, I don't know if there's any deliveries left. It was pretty good delivery month on the Comex. Well, let's take a look. Let's see. Silver. Uh, let's see if there's any left. Uh, da, 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 da. Left to be delivered, I mean, for the month of March. It's been a really big month. Um, uh, yeah, they're still delivering. Uh, open interest is still 21 contracts. Not many, but um, let's see how many have been delivered. It, it was going to be about 23, 24. I think it's close to 30 now. I believe, I believe. Okay, let's take a look. Down at the bottom. We are at 5,487 contracts, which is 27, about uh, 27 million, 27 million 500. Um, ounces of silver that's pretty big and when you look at who's delivering whoever's delivering is by definition the short bank of america look at this look at this little shell game they delivered for their house account they delivered so it's them doing it for themselves they delivered it to themselves and then they took delivery from themselves nothing bad going on here jb morgan chase customers we just saw jb morgan chase get uh, busted for not uh, properly watching their customers, they paid three hundred something million dollars by the, and I haven't heard yet on the DOJ coming out. I don't know the the results of that case. Um, no results mean they they didn't sign off on the release, so they're not released as far as I can tell from the original nine hundred twenty million. But here's the big short, HSBC, the criminal bank HSBC. That's massive. All look at look at the last four months. That tells you who the big short is, HSBC. HSBC used to run the hedge book for the U.S. Mint. Talk about collusion. Uh, I don't know if they still do, but the U.S. Mint with Ventures Gibson is, has done some seriously major things to stop the flow of silver. So they have it. That's what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> so we got, uh, as far as cryptos are going, um, I, I heard someone wanted to debate me and or, or someone was looking for a debate in crypto. There's no debate left to have with cryptos, my friends. If you don't understand it by now, you, you'll never understand it. And, and the crypto haters have already lost. Look at the price of cryptos. Look at the price of Bitcoin. Look at the amazing companies that are being developed on the blockchain. If you don't get it now, you never will. So there's nothing left to debate. Bitcoin's at Seventy thousand dollars. Peter Schiff had a shot at buying it at you know fifty bucks, ten bucks. Chris Dwayne had a shot buying it at ten bucks. You blew it. You blew it. <laughs> and here we are. Here we sit. What uh, sixteen years later? 
15 years later and, and people are still wanting to debate it. There's nothing left to debate. <laughs> Cryptos are here to stay. Unless, of course, they you know get the budgets under control, stop printing money, and pay off all the debt. Now, that, then I, I, I'd be willing to debate someone that, about <laughs> cryptos being viable. But still, the businesses that are being built on, especially, I mean, look at <laughs> Theta is going to swallow the world when it comes to tech, AI. I, I heard they're paying uh, AI programmers over a million dollars a year to switch companies. Why not just go buy Theta? You, you don't want you, you'll never have to work again. Theta and Theta Fuel. AI doesn't work without that. Without the massive expansion of storage capacity on site, massive expansion of computing uh, technology on site, shareable. It started off just sharing videos, which is a huge technological achievement. But then once you're in a computer and someone's running an edge node and sharing all their uh, excess capacity, why not share the computing power? And so they invented the uh, the edge nodes, edge storage, edge compute. Why not use the extra hard drive that they have? Why go out and buy massive amounts of, of hardware and uh, processing speed when it's already there? That's what they invented, a way to tap into that. That's why AI is going to be successful without having to build zillions of mega flops of storage or whatever they got petaflops uh it's crazy i can't tell you what day the theta is going to be a thousand bucks but it's gonna that's what michelle white Dove saw that early on again another another psychic god those people who who, who are like poo poo on psychics you just you're missing out on amazing insight and it doesn't it Psychics won't give you the answer, but they'll show you where to look. And that's what's key on the road route. Anyway, uh, so right now uh, there's talk that the one being taken down is going to be J.P. Morgan. Um, and it makes sense to me. They're knee-deep in Epstein. They were knee-deep in Bernie Madoff. They're knee-deep in derivatives. They're probably the most criminal bank. Who knows about Goldman Sachs? Um, that's just a trading bank. It should... Many of Goldman should be gone too, but uh, the big one that will take down all other financial systems is J.P. Morgan. And wouldn't you like to blame Jamie Dimon for this? I mean, Jamie Demon, as the Epstein girls call him. Anyway, yeah, they're at $50 trillion derivatives. Um, once Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan derivative book goes, all these banks are gone. All these banks are gone. Um that's basically every bank on the planet, every brokerage account, every 401k, every checking account, every savings account, just gone. And then it's it comes down to, okay, how are we going to sort through what we have, <laughs> the rubble, and restart things? Um, you could say, hey, I have, my, I have my statement that says I own 100 shares of uh, Google or 100 shares of Apple, but you know, somebody owns those exact same shares. Those have all been rehypothecated. Um, that's what Reggie Middleton can help with, the peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Although uh, Larry Fink, the, the head of uh, BlackRock, is it Larry Fink? Um, said, oh yeah, we can put everything on blockchain and have no more rehab application. Um, sorry, buddy. Sorry, Mr. Fink. Sorry, BlackRock. Uh, Reggie Middleton already invented that technology and has patented it. So go talk to Reggie. <laughs> I love it. Um, I Everybody's trying to figure out what this bridge collapse means, how much it will hit the supply chains. It's going to be major. Just think that major. And it's not going to be the only one. There's going to be, I think this is a war, so it's going to be successive attacks on the infrastructure of uh, the, the fiat monetary system. Keep an eye on that. Why do I think this? Check out this, uh, the video. You can see... This is the full video. They're just showing where it hits. Watch the full video. It is not going to hit that pylon. That's the weakest pylon on the whole thing. The, the lights go out, and then it starts to turn. Do you see that? It starts to turn even more. It starts to turn. The lights go out. Look, it's even more turning. I'm going to go right for that pylon. And then they couldn't see it, so they turned the lights back on, and then they see it, and then, okay, we got it. We're on track. And it literally turns right into it. Um... And there are cars going by. You can see trucks. This is speeded up a little. There were cars going by. People said, no, there's no cars. 
And then right when it's about to hit, see, there's cars going by right now. Right when it's about to hit, you don't see any cars. Maybe they did stop them. They were doing maintenance on the, the bridge, supposedly. Um, so I don't know if people went into the water. I know a, there was a crew there working on it, supposedly that, you know, six out of eight of them died or something like that. I don't know. But clearly, if you look at the ship, it turns right for the pylon. Right now, it's going straight. All of a sudden, it turns, and it's cranking. Where are the towboats? I mean, it is a requirement in shipping that that thing should have towboats on either side of it when you're coming into dock. That is, it's just obvious. There's so many things that are just so obvious with this. Look at it turn right there. I'm turning right into the pilot. Unbelievable. I'm going to steer right at it, and then I'm going to clip the edge going however fast it was going it was going pretty fast and got it right at the edge perfect there you go that'll take care of it and boom and people talk about all the little explosions that happen we'll find out over time stuff like that you find out over time anyway this is big sword make sure you go to roadrunner.com subscribe to the private road get all those jenny moonstone videos figure out what else she said and, and our analysis of what's going on in silver, we are in very interesting times of silver. Yes, I do think we are going to. Uh, I think it'll overshoot. When, when silver is freely traded, it'll overshoot uh, gold because it's so much more important than gold. Um, so I'm thinking uh, 1 to 10 maybe. 1 ounce of gold by 10 ounces of silver. If you love gold, at 90 to 1, I have no idea why you're not swapping your gold for silver because when it the ratio goes back to somewhere with insanity um say 10 to 1 uh you can make eight times you can have eight times the amount of gold you have right now just by putting it in silver then you can swap back if you love some gold so much i'll probably do some swapping when when silver comes down below like five to one three to one the golden ratio 1.618 to one i'll do some swapping of gold to silver but i'll also buy uh with all my silver, I'll buy a hell of a lot of Theta and Theta Fuel. Maybe even th Theta Drop. Theta Fuel right now, I think, is the one to buy because it's a 35 to 1 ratio. That ratio, when AI kicks in and everybody needs Theta Fuel, whew, Theta Fuel is going to rock. Anyway, that's what I got for you. It's a big swear. I'll talk to you.